Well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On our YouTube channel, we talk about all things homesteading and try to implement some of those things on our rural 100 acres here in Southern West Virginia. Well, in today's video, I want to talk about trees again. And uh, we've talked about quite a few different species of trees, so we'll kind of add this to the list. But today I want to talk about the mockernut hickory or, and the shagbark hickory. And yes, it was, this is something I staged. I, I wanted to make sure both of these trees would be in the shot. Uh, a lot of work went into setting this up. The first tree is the mockernut hickory. Um, the common names are mockernut, white hickory, white heart hickory, bullnut, and pignut. Do whatever you want with those. This tree is obviously in the hickory family, which interesting enough, hickories and pecans are actually related to one another. Uh, so they uh, they are similar there. The mockernut hickory is a is a common tree in the Appalachian hardwoods. They they do tend to grow um, all over Appalachia, and uh, from my understanding, they are very prolific throughout the southeastern part of the United States, east of the Mississippi, and into the south more. So there's definitely a lot of those around here. It's a very common tree to find in the woods here. Well, they prefer to grow in low elevation in humid climates, which uh, definitely classifies where we are. Again, we're about, for those of you who don't know, we're about, um, where I'm standing now is probably about 900 feet, 800, 900 feet above sea level. Uh, so uh, very humid, West Virginia Appalachian hardwood forests are very humid. Uh, so these things do quite well there. Higher elevation where it's drier, less humid, they tend not to be as prolific. Um, so when you get up 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 feet in the Appalachian Mountains, you don't see these uh, hickory trees. Well, like any hickory, they produce hickory nuts, and um, they can be quite prolific. I happen to have one here in my hand. In fact, this one's green. It's just fallen recently. Already something's been gnawing on it. The hickory nut has a pretty thick flesh, a, a thick husk around it. And of course, once you uncover that, you have the kernel. And then within the kernel, cracking the kernel is where you'd have the meat of the nut, the actual edible portion. Um, so that's why a lot of people don't fool around with hickory too much to eat. There's a lot of work that goes into them. Uh, but they are actually very tasty. Again, being part of the pecan family, um, there are people that actually use hickory in place of pecans in recipes. The mockernut hickory, like other hickory trees, has a compound leaf. So you can see this would be considered the leaf here. And this one happens to have seven, um, seven leaflets on it. And that is, uh, they say that's indicative of, of a mockernut, that you would see uh, seven primarily, whereas a shagbark, you'd maybe see only five. Yeah, I haven't really compared that. We'll see. The shagbark is covered in poison ivy, so the, trees are, the leaves are much higher. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, very, very easy to identify leaf. You can see it's just a big lobed. Now these are actually, it's, it's getting late in the year, so these are starting to turn. And these will turn either brown, you know, not very attractive brown, uh, depending on the climate, they can actually turn gold. And when they turn gold, they're very, very pretty, very rich golden color. Of course, being a big producer of nuts it makes them a huge hit with all the wildlife in the woods. Deer, squirrel, bear, raccoon, everybody seems to come around and eat hickory nuts. So usually when I look around, you can see Usually you find a lot of the empty shells, the empty, empty husks, and you don't find too many of the nuts laying around. Sometimes you do. Here goes one now. Actually, no, still just a husk. So not only do the wildlife love them, but my pigs love them. Uh, they really, uh, really enjoy, if I would take a handful of these, uh, in an area where I'm standing that's not in pig pasture, if I'd take a handful of these and take them over there, they'd chomp on them like crazy, eat the husks and all. So uh, they uh, tend to enjoy them greatly. The mockernut hickory can actually, uh, over time, it can actually develop cavities in the tree. It um, doesn't necessarily kill it. Uh, it just can actually develop small cavities. The tree can still grow and flourish in that situation. Uh, but those cavities become really nice habitat for animals. So again, squirrel love them. Think about it if you've got a tree that produces housing for you and produces food. That's where you'd want to be. So uh, good opportunity there. Again, a lot of wildlife enjoy this tree. They also produce a very thick canopy, and this tree is on the edge of my road, so it's kind of making more of a canopy than it would if it was just left alone in the woods. Let's see if I can tilt the camera back far enough. So pretty dense canopy there, which again makes it nice for wildlife, squirrels and birds and those type of things build nests in them. Uh, very tall tree, can get up to, uh, I believe, 120 feet tall. They live for over 100 years. 
Their bark is unique as compared to the shag bark tree. We'll talk about that one in a second, but uh, their bark has more of a crisscross pattern. Um, you could say it could possibly be close to the poplar bark, uh, but this is more furrowed, more pronounced, and the crisscrosses are more pronounced. So when you, you look back at these trees, you see that there's a lot of, looks like the bark comes down and actually crosses, makes a whole bunch of little X's. So very easy to identify that in the woods as well. Well, it's commercial use. Uh, of course, uh, being a hardwood, it does have timber value. Uh, it is a very dense wood, so it's used in uh, furniture making. There's a lot of flooring that's made from it. Uh, you look at handles for tools, anything that needs to be resistant uh, to high shock uh, can handle that. I believe a lot of sporting equipment is made of that, especially as the ash tree gets killed out because the emerald ash borer. Uh, a lot of sporting equipment is moving over to hickory to take uh, take the place of the ash that's going to be non-existent here in a couple years. Because of its density and the fact that it does dry out well, it is a good uh, wood fuel. So if you if you burn wood, uh, you probably run into hickory, and it's it's a pretty good burner there. Um, Splitting it's a little tougher if you split by hand. If you have a, a log splitter, then of course it makes it easier, but I can speak from personal experience. It's a little tough to split a uh, mocker nut hickory by hand. They're pretty tight. Interestingly enough, the mocker nut hickory is one of the most sought after woods for smoking hams. You know, you think about when you hear about a uh, hickory smoked bacon or hickory this or hickory whatever, that's usually the, uh, the species they're looking at. Again, there's other hickories that'll work, but this one's really good for smoking hams and pork products and of course anything you want to smoke. Hickory flavored, you can look for a mocker nut and get uh, good flavor from that. So what about the shag bark? How different is the shag bark hickory from the mocker nut? Well, Again, very similar trees, different species. Probably the easiest way to identify it, of course, is as the shag bark hickory becomes more mature, it has these large scales of bark uh, that look like they're falling off. This one, of course, is the poison ivy's helping pull that one off. Um, we'll be touching less of the poison ivy here. But you can, you can really see it. It's, it's very shaggy looking tree. It definitely lives up to its name. It's, it's very easy to identify in the woods. You can spot those from you know, 10 or 20 feet away simply because it's, it just looks bushy with the bark scaling off of it. The leaf pattern, again, these are all poison ivy leaves you see here, so I'm not reaching up to grab those. But the leaf pattern is similar, except it usually, it's a compound leaf, usually with five leaves in a cluster. Yeah, okay. You have to take my word for it because I can't reach it. Um, obviously the identification of the bark is the easiest way you can tell, the, tell them apart from one another. And also the fruit they produce, the nuts. So in this example I have the mocker nut here, see the size of that, and the shag bark hickory nut. So both have holes around them. Um, one is just a little bit smaller than the other. Now again, both of them are still tough to deal with as far as getting the meat out and uh, it can be a little time consuming there, but both have pretty much the same nutritional value, uh, same taste. Some people say one tastes better than the other. I don't necessarily, I'm not a hickory nut connoisseur, so I couldn't tell you one way or the other. The wood of the shag bark is actually considered a little bit more dense than the mocker nut. So it's a little bit tougher tree there when it comes to lumber. This tree is more widely used in flooring. Obviously they like the density of that for flooring. One interesting thing about hickory trees, both the mocker nut and the shag bark, is they are very slow growers. They produce a very deep tap root, so they're not really good for transplanting. So if you're walking through the woods and you find a small sapling, say, hey, I want to dig that up, uh, you may end up damaging that tap root if you don't get it all out of there, and of course end up killing the tree. So it doesn't transplant very well. They are slow growers, but they also, they don't mature to the point of producing fruit until they're at least 40 years old, according to what I've researched. So you can imagine if you're, if you're planting a uh, hickory tree from a sapling for the purpose of having uh, you know, nut production on your, on your homestead, then you're going to be waiting a while. Um, so usually when people take advantage of hickory trees, it's because they're already established on their homestead. And established is a, is a good word here. Um, if I look around, just where I'm standing here, I'm pig pastures behind me, house, I can see the house, house is 300 yards away. Uh, but in this area, we've got the twin mocker nut here. There's a mocker nut behind, um, shag bark here. 
Uh, to my right, there's another mocker nut here. There's a shag bark. Two, three, four. Yeah, there's probably six or seven hickory trees just right here within a you know, quarter or an eighth of an acre square. So we have we have quite a bit of hickory trees on our property, and and I love the fact that they're here. As I mentioned before, pigs like them. So having them on uh, on property. Uh, anywhere that I have pig pasture, if I've got a mature hickory tree growing, then I make sure I can leave it unless it's completely crowded against another and I need to thin some of them out. But I make sure I leave those hickory trees because they produce a lot of protein for my pigs. So as I finish in the fall, um, these nuts actually start dropping from September to November. So here we are in the middle of September and there's already a lot of, a lot of nuts on the ground. Now again, based upon my research, the hickory trees don't produce a bumper crop of hickory nuts every year. In fact, they get their best crop about once every three years. And I would agree with that. There's uh, some hickory trees we have closer to the house where there's times if I'm on the mower uh, and it's this time of year and I'm mowing it and it's like driving on marbles because they're just everywhere. And actually the, I'm on the hillside, so the mower kind of kicks out a little bit. There's other years that it's not, it's fine. There's, there's not nearly as much production. And I know that can also vary with pollination. That could vary with late frost, those type of things. But it seems to be very sporadic. From what I've read, that's why people don't really mess with trying to do a commercial hickory nut farm. A, the time it takes to grow, and B, there's just no consistency in that production. But in, its, in the wild habitat, man, it produces a ton of protein. Now, if you'd happen to have a hickory tree close to your homestead, or if you're, you've just acquired some land and you think, hey, I wanna, I wanna build my house or my cabin real close to all these hickory trees because they're gonna be producing all this, this protein, I've got the shade from it, all the good things, then that makes sense. But keep in mind, there is a lot of litter that comes from these trees. Of course, the, uh, the nuts hit the ground. Other than my pigs, nobody, none of the wildlife eat the husks. So there's a lot of husks laying around. If I was walking through here barefoot, that would be a bad deal because those husks can be pretty sharp. With the shag bark hickory, of course, that bark flakes off in big scales, so you could have a lot of those laying around. So when you think of something close to your house, gutters, you know, if your kid's running around barefoot, uh, those type of issues could, could be a no-no. A but it would bring in wildlife. So if you're, uh, I like having them around the house because when it's deer season, I don't have to go too far into the woods. <laughs> I can take care of that from the backyard. So the plan with hickory trees on Red Tool House, whether they're mock or not or shag bark, it's pretty much leave them where they are. As we expand pig pasture and get the pigs into the woods, then I definitely want to leave those behind so it can produce the protein. If I do find some that need to be cut, then I will cut those and take them to the mill uh, because I'm interested in the wood more than I am firewood. I've got plenty of dead ash to burn, so I don't, don't necessarily want to have the, um, the hickory for firewood. The ash will be fine, uh, but it is a good burning wood. Now this tree here, this one actually has a story. I think I've shared it in the past. Looks like a nine millimeter slug right there. This was the end where I'm standing it was the end of our old pistol range. And we used to hang a lot of targets on this hickory tree. And it was a decent sized hickory tree and it lived quite a long time. You can see how it's kind of scarred over before it finally gave up the ghost and surrendered itself. Uh, but it, we had uh, quite a bit of ammo into it. And finally one day I had some friends out with their uh, with their ARs and they were really putting a lot of lead down range and the tree ended up falling over just after they left. A little bit of termite action in there too. But the hickory tree is, is pretty prolific and like I said, it is, it is a good wood. So I would definitely keep it on the homestead. I'd definitely use it even if um, you don't have hickory trees in your pasture for your pigs and you've got them around, then I would definitely consider cl collecting those nuts. At times, I'll pay the boys. I'll give them money to go out and collect a bucket load of nuts um, just to give them something to do and obviously uh, inject some nice protein in for the pigs there. So I'll, I'll pay them to go out in the woods and collect a bunch of uh, hickory nuts and then we'll feed them to the pigs. If you want to take the time to work with a nut and, and eat it, then it's, it's, again, a good source of protein and it is a little bit of work to do, but they are quite tasty. Uh, in fact, uh, I've, I know I've talked about Edible Acres before, another YouTube channel. I'll link to it up here. Uh, but he has a couple videos on how he'll take hickory nuts and make hickory nut tea and, and uh, do different things uh, with the nuts. Kind of a 
processing them. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Again, we'll add this one to our tree collection and we'll uh, keep talking about other trees and plants as we get into it. Subscribe if you have it and be sure to check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Red Tool House Farm. Take care, everybody.